In the last week, the week which just passed, the world has been taught a loud and very obvious lesson. I hope you didn't miss it. It is a loud lesson because it has been taught on the international scene. And it is an obvious lesson because we already knew the truth contained in the lesson. What is the lesson? Simply this. If you continually spend more than you have, you will go bankrupt. Mm -hmm. The lesson was taught by the nation of Greece, which became the first nation to default on its debt in modern history. The reason that Greece defaulted on its debt is simple. Its government voted to give more to the people, the citizens of the nation, than it could afford to pay. Eventually, the deficit overwhelmed the nation, and now every one of us, and I just don't mean people in Greece, I mean every one of us, every person in the worldwide, is caught up in the catastrophe. Now, we Americans need to consider the lesson carefully. You know why? Yeah, we are following the same pattern as did the nation of Greece. Our government continues to vote us benefits for which we cannot pay. Now, you may like them. You may want them. They may make your life sweeter, or at least so you think. But the fact of the matter is that we now spend billions of dollars more than we make year after year after year. We are already slaves to our debt. We are, folks. If you read the writings of Alexander Hamilton, who was the founder of the United States financial system, and heed his warning about taking debt, you understand the principles which we are violating. I know that Hamilton's writings are now 200 years old. To modern people, anything 200 years old seems antiquated and out of step with the modern philosophy of the world. But the fact of the matter is that what Hamilton wrote is true. He said, it's in his books, he wrote it, it's okay for the nation to take debt as long as you can repay it. It's simple, folks. You borrow money, hand over foot, you spend it, but you can't pay it back, you will go bankrupt. You know the truth of the lesson as surely as do I. And debt enslaves us. And debt we cannot pay will consume us. Though we are, were once a free nation, we have been enslaved again, and our master's name is debt. Now, I know you're sitting there saying, well, what can I do about it? The government is spending all this money, not me. I almost want to cuss, okay, to make the point. We are the ones who elect the suckers. And when they stand up and tell you that they're going to continue to give you what you can't afford, you need to be bold enough to say back to them when you cast your ballot, oh no, I can't afford it. It's time. But our American enslavement is not only on that level. Today, we are a nation which is yielding to greater and greater personal immorality. Now, yesterday, we watched one of my favorite movies on the television. We watched Steel Magnolias. I love it when that lady pushes, oh, and says, here, hit Weezer. <laughs> I love it. It's great. Okay, I love the movie. It's a great movie. But they kept repeating these same two commercials in the movie that were driving me literally crazy all day. 
Okay, I'm going to go buy it on tape. Maybe we already have it on tape. I don't know. So we can watch it on tape and not have to put up with the commercials. There were commercials advertising two movies, and I wish I could remember the name of the movies, but I never got the names down because they are movies no good Christian person should ever go to see. The first one in, this, in the commercial, I don't know the name of the movie, it's this girl who apparently thinks that sexual immorality is funny. Okay, because the whole movie is making a spoof of her sexual life. And she's having a conversation in the commercial with this guy. And she says to him, well, how many women have you slept with? And he says, three. And she responds, oh, so have I. And that's supposed to be a joke. Okay? It's immoral. It's indecent. Even if she's done it, she oughtn't to be talking to anybody about it. And we don't need to hear it on television and our kids should not allowed, be allowed to see it. I'm sorry, it's corrupting. It is immoral. Now, the second one's almost as bad. Because in the second one, they are encouraging young people. Because it's one of those teeny movies, you know, that you used to do the beachy things, you know, the really weird stuff with Frankie and Annette. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. But, but in this one, okay, what they are literally saying to young people is go ahead and do it if it feels good because you can. I grew up in the hippie generation when everybody was supposed to be saying that. And I'm going to tell you what, young people, it didn't work then and it ain't going to work now. All that's going to happen is sorrow. Your sorrow and your pain. Okay, but there it was, all day long, time after time, and they're encouraging you to go out. They even tell you the date when the movies will be released. It's all in July. You can go out and watch all this stupid personal immorality displayed on the big screen. Now, it was the great French philosopher de Tocqueville who remarked, America is great because America is good. He went on to say, when America ceases to be good, she will cease to be great. I almost believe that the words to the song America that we sang are based on what to, to, to Tocqueville said. Okay, it struck me today how similar they are. See, he was looking at the hearts of the people of this nation. What he saw there was an overwhelming desire the overwhelming desire of the American people to do what was morally right regardless of its personal cost. They were willing to do what was right simply because it was what was right to do even if it cost dearly. He understood that this guiding moral five were protected the whole nation and brought on it the blessing of Almighty God. But today, our land is racked with increasing moral perversity. We have lost our desire to follow the moral law of God as it is outlined in the Holy Scripture. We feel free to change not only the jots and tittles of the Word of God, which is, by the, word, by the way, specifically forbidden in the Word. We feel free <laughs> to change to ignore entire passages of the Bible simply because they no longer please us. We feel that we can redefine marriage. Uh, by the way, that happened this week. Okay, We think that we can uh, declare certain lifestyles which are condemned by Scripture to be alternates and okay. Mm -hmm. We feel that we are free to kill babies simply because they are an inconvenience to us. And then, we sit around and wonder why the blessing of God, which once fell on this land by the buckets full, is now only mercy drops. We wonder. Though once set free, and filled with a desire to do right in the eyes of Almighty God. We have been enslaved again to our own passions and our misguided opinions, and this time, our Master's name is Sin. And i got to tell you, 
It's not just common, ordinary people like all of you who are guilty. It is the great religious leaders of our time, like the Pope, like Tony Campolo from our own denomination, who are leading us into error and encouraging us to disobey the Word of God. What are the people to do if the great leaders of the faith tell them that it is okay to throw the Scripture away? So it is that the warning of the Apostle Paul rings in our ears today. The single verse of Scripture which Cynthia read to you a moment ago. You have been set free. Do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Now when Paul wrote those words, he was speaking to Christians in Galatians who had once, Galatia who had once been devout Jews. They had been taught that their salvation was based on the perfect keeping of the Old Testament law, both parts of the Old Testament law. There was the moral law. That is the portion of the Old Testament law which is wrapped up in the Ten Commandments and the expl explanation thereof. Jesus himself taught us that no portion of the moral law was released by his coming or by his teaching. In fact, he said that he was the fulfillment of the moral law. Even today, Christians are obligated to fulfill the moral law. That's why we cannot kill babies because the Bible says we cannot. It is why... It is Im Im immoral uh, to do the things that the Bible tells us we, we cannot do. It, 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 it's why we cannot take debt that we cannot repay because the moral law of the Bible forbids it. But there is also the ritual law, the second part of the Old Testament law. It dealt with the practices of Judaism, the sacrifices, the hand washing, the, the food regulations and acts like circumcision. The apostle taught that Jesus' sacrifice set us free from observance of the ritual law. Our chains to it are gone. It was practiced until the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, was slain. But it is not practiced since. The problem was that certain teachers in the Galatian church were teaching Galatian Christians that they were obligated to keep both parts of the Old Testament law. And because of their background in Judaism, many of the Jews who had converted to Christianity thought that this argument made sense. Paul was simply saying to them that God had set them free from the ritual practices of the Old Testament. And that they should not become enslaved to these practices again. How confusing it is when one teacher says this and another teacher says that. Okay? How do you know who you should follow when one says you don't have to and the other says you do? But folks, even as I ask the question, I hear in my ears another passage of Scripture. This one from Jesus himself. He said, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family. But a son belongs to the family forever. So if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. I tell you, the Son has set us free. And it is the Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who makes us free. But we must be careful not to sell ourselves back into slavery. If we forsake the moral law of God 
If we forsake the Word of God, we sell ourselves again into bondage, for we make ourselves slaves to sin. I tell you today, that as children of God, we have been set free. And we must not sell ourselves again as slaves by following the world and leaving the Word. Can I say it again? Don't you dare listen to what the teachers of the world say, whether they stand in pulpits and say it or not. If they try to take you away from the Word of God, you tell them to go away and to leave you be. Because when you abandon the Word of God, you will sell yourself again into slavery. I tell you that we must pray for revival in the church. For even within the church, we are adopting the teaching of the world over the moral teaching of the Scripture. I tell you that we must pray today for the misguided teachers in the church who put their own opinions above the Word of God. God help them, for He says in His Word that He will hold them accountable for their error. I tell you that we must pray for revival in this nation because we are selling ourselves again to two old masters, debt and sin, and they will not be kind to us. They promise freedom, the freedom to enjoy life and the government pays. They promise the freedom to do what seems right in our own eyes. But in the end, they will blind us with the the enslaving chains of destruction.